Well, I'll call the meeting order at uh, 1205. And we need a motion to approve the minutes from March 3rd. Can you uh, have a roll of who's who's in the meeting before we do that? Is that for, for, for school committee person? Yes, that's all I'm interested in. Okay. Me, Judy, you, Damien, Mary, and Olivia. Okay, so we've only got six. Well, we've got six out of what? Six out Seven. of 11, that's, that's a quorum. Well, it may and it may not be, depending upon how the uh, how the votes add up on you know the proportional voting. Yeah, but Judy has the list. She can tell you whether or not you've got over fifty percent. But we also have nothing that 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 we have a way to vote on, do we? No, but it doesn't make any difference to get the to get the quorum. You probably have to have a weighted number of people there. All right, I have it right here. Weighted vote. Donna, you got a you got a piece of paper? Yep. Decker 0.98. Damien 0.98. Olivia 0.98. Mary 1. Judy 1.05. Myself 1. What's that add up to? Five point nine nine. Nine point nine nine, you said? No. Five point nine nine. <laughs> so do you round up? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it appears we have a quorum, Bobby. All right, I'm just trying to look. Total of 11, okay, 11. 11, 5.99 over 11. Gotcha. So we have enough. I just, sure, I just want to make sure we had sufficient number. Gotcha, sir. I've always care, I kept that weighted vote that Donna sent me a couple of years ago in my, my phone, so. Well, it's going to change next year because of the uh, census. Okay. Got I it. believe. I don't have any problem with the minutes, Bobby. You want a motion? Yes, please. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mary. All in favor, we'll do roll call. Myself, yes. Judy? Yes. Robert? Yes. Damien? Yes. Mary? Yes. Olivia? Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. And by the way, I should call your attention to the fact that you have uh, uh, four members from Deerfield, one from Sunderland, and one from Waitley, and no representation from Conway. Okay. So can we can we add some more stuff to Conway today so we can vote them out or whatever? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just wondering. All Is four Deerfield members are here. Is that a problem? No, okay. I don't think so. Right. Um, I'm looking for some public comment from the public that's maybe in with us. I didn't think there was any public comment in these uh, sessions. Really? But it's not not my we have the ability now because we, we post the number and. Uh, okay. Really log in. Allison, you have anything you want to share with us or Sarah or whatever for a public comment? I'll, I'll just say that um, thank you to the school committee for um, supporting the teachers and in what we're doing with the students and our community. We just really appreciate it. So noted. Thank you. Okay, unfinished business. We've got an update on the on the virus, Darius. 
Yeah, so basically, um, the reason for this meeting is for twofold. One, with the joint meeting, it's really hard to um, really bring you guys to voice and ask questions regarding what we're doing with the academics. So I wanted uh, George or Sarah, they can um, both try to mute each other or unmute each other um, to kind of give an overview of where we are academically. Um, but we also ha have to talk about the financial situation um, and we got some requests from towns to look at reducing our budget and have a conversation about that. So we'll start with the positive first. And so if, if George or Sarah could just kind of jump in, just a brief, you know, make it brief, but a brief overview of what's going on. And then if any school committee members have any questions as how the secondary is doing things um, during this, we kind of, we had a initial rollout and then they, when it got extended to May 4th, they went into a little bit deeper. And, and I think the deeper part is, uh, I just want to make sure everybody's clear about what's what's up. George? And I, and I can on that briefly, and then I'm going to ask Sarah to, to fill in the details. But we did so we did finish up quarter three, which ended on April 3rd. Uh, and then since then, we've moved towards a credit, no credit process uh, in terms of uh, in terms of um, working with the students. Uh, we've been meeting with the teachers on a consistent basis. Uh, we've been having faculty meetings. Uh, where we've been trying to elicit feedback from them, the best way to, to move forward with this. Uh, we've been having very good luck uh, with the teachers and with the kids um, uh, in terms of in terms of all this. And I'm going to ask Sarah to step in uh, just to talk a little bit more about this. Uh, Sarah, if you could. Sure. So as George said, we've been uh, meeting, meeting weekly with faculty just to make sure that everyone is um, in the loop and everyone is um, able to provide feedback. We also have the weekly reflection sheets um, and those are really helpful for us as administrators to just keep an eye on what's happening systemically. Um, I think because we started the remote learning the day after school closed, we're really in a fairly good routine at this point. So students have been used to checking Google Classroom, checking their emails. Um, it allowed us to work through some of those stumbling blocks that we thought we might have um, and indeed did have, but we were able to kind of clean up some of that in the beginning, reaching out to students that we knew uh, were not getting connected right away. Even though the first three weeks were enrichment and review sessions, um, it, it was a pretty good indicator where we were going to be. So I feel like this week, and George um, can jump in, that we're really trying to return to almost business as usual. So we've been having our um, concern meetings. We call them SIT meetings, so student intervention team meetings. And the conversations are around those students that are not checking in, around those students that um, are receiving uh, lower grades for quarter three and what can we do to make sure that they're uh, fully engaged in quarter four. Um, we've been having, um, you know, at, to be expected, um, our students that are our top students are fully engaged and they are just going right along. Um, our students that are receiving specialized services and supports through the IEP process, those students are also very fully connected. Um, our students that are kind of middle of the road, um, most of those are connected, but there are a few of those that are not connected. And those are the students that we're really focusing on now because we've um, connected with our students at the top and our students that are needing additional support. It's that middle group that we're really trying to keep an eye on um, and make sure that we're fully engaging them. And, and I would add to that, as, as we continue to roll this out, um, we've been working with the teachers. Uh, I have to say that the counselors, the guidance counselors, the adjustment counselors are all are all being developed into the fold now too. So we're really, I mean, we're 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 continuing to work on our scheduling for next year. Uh, we're we're looking we're looking at students um, in terms of you know where they may be uh, for, for graduation. Um, so there's a lot of things that are going on um, that that we're we're bringing all of the pieces together. Uh, the further we get into this, it's becoming clear, uh, more clear to us, which I think is helpful. Yeah. And I know Damien said he had a question as well for Sarah. Yeah, this is really more of just a long-term question. And I don't know if it just gets more into state laws and whatnot, but the one positive I see coming out of all of this, is there any way going for, forward long-term where we could, in a sense, implement this at a, at a, you know, snap of a finger, like on a snow day, 
and turn this into a snow day and never really have additional days that have to be made up at the end of the year. Yeah, it's a real, it's a very interesting idea. I mean, we've been we've been looking at it a little bit differently. I never thought about the snow day angle, but that is something to think about as well. Um, we've been thinking about, you know, what what happens if next fall we end up with a period of time like this? Um, what can we learn with from this? I think this at talking with faculty, this has been a huge professional development um, experiment. I mean, people that were not using Google Classroom on a regular basis, they're using Google Classroom now. You know, so everyone's had to kind of quickly learn technology that they may never have been exposed to. I will also say that um, you know, there's been a fear in education as uh, technology is rolled out, as computers are rolled out, that somehow we're going to replace teachers with computers and, and do all this online. And it is very clear to me after this very brief experiment that that will never happen in K-12 education. Um, the relationships that our teachers are building with students on a day-to-day -day basis, being in the classroom. Sure, we can do some of this online and we certainly will do, um, have learned from this about things that do work on well online, but uh, we're never gonna replace those um, human connections that are happening in our K through 12 world. Great, thank you. But yeah, everyone's doing a great job with all this. And my daughter who's in seventh grade, she can, um, she's getting busier and busier now. It's, it's she's just, doing her own thing all day long, which is makes it easy for me. Huh. Uh, Olivia's got a question, I think, for Sarah, too. Yeah, so those that's a really tough one. That's a really tough one. So um, faculty that have those non-academic, so PE is, is a pretty easy one. So they want students to be moving. It's easy to move woodworking. He is doing a curriculum. He is reaching out to students to do projects. Um, I'd have to talk with him individually to find out exactly what he's doing to be creative. But um, I know our classes are going full steam ahead. Um, he's just using whatever materials he thinks they might have available in the house. Um, and so teachers are getting extremely creative. Uh, the school to community service, we've had to put that a little bit on hold um, because obviously we're not gonna have our students going out into the community. Um, so some of them are picking up some smaller projects, but that's one that's really just kind of hanging there. That's that's a hard one to do. I think uh, else, Mary had a question. Can you when when you when you answer these questions, Sarah or whoever? Uh, there's a couple people I know. Bob Decker can't see the question, so if you can just say what the question is, so they'll know. So Mary was just commenting that um, you know Desi has decided that they're not going to do the remote um, snow days anymore. Um, and she's suggesting that they may change their mind now. And I agree. Um, they may see this as something that actually can be implemented. Oh, good. good. Anybody else have a question for George or Sarah? Mainly follow up on both those things is one, I, I hate to lose the magic of a snow day, even though I hate calling them. Um, so before we rush into nonstop every day and there was never a break with a snow day, um, just saying that out there now. Um, but the other side also is that it is also, I think, and George and I had had a, and Sarah had a, had a kind of brief conversation that we also should start looking at our curriculum in the future to support students to learn how to do online learning because we're seeing more colleges and universities moving to taking some more general ed courses online. And perhaps we have to build our curriculum to help support students so they're ready when they leave our folds to um, to go and, and take online courses. But we're, we're still talking about that in the initial sense, but this is certainly um, shown that we could possibly do something like that, maybe a, a hybrid kind of thing where they work with the teacher on some days and work remotely on other days, or you know, just so we can teach them how to be, how to approach an online class and that kind of stuff. But that's, again, taking a negative, issue situation we have and try to make a positive out of it which is always a good thing to do uh go ahead damien ask a question oh uh, yeah since we're just talking about it now with re really the pandemic and everything uh this is really for darius he probably doesn't know yet or anything but there was an article i believe was yesterday in the daily hampshire gazette uh from the amherst pelham superintendent and he was just talking about the school, his his belief the school would not be opening 
for the rest of the year. I don't know if where so, he's getting yeah, so it. Yeah, I had a conversation with Mike before he released that article. He he spoke with us at our uh, round table. We had a discussion earlier in that day. Um, and I talked to him offline as well. His concern was he had a lot of community members that felt they were going back May 4th. And that was kind of a done deal. And that um, he was like, um, that's the earliest we can go back in the, you know, the, how the governor phrased that. Um, he was really, he felt like he had to get the word out there that that date is not in stone and that um, he had to get out to the community that it's, it's likely to change. And that, I mean, right now, I think everybody on this um, Brady Bunch board, it, it doesn't believe we're actually going back on May 4th. Um, but there are, you know, there's pockets in our community that that's what they were told and that's what they were planning on for. So um, I was happy that he got that kind of article out there for people to kind of digest. But I mean, we're starting to see um, Bob kind of sent out to me last uh, within the last day that Connecticut extended, um, Vermont's gone to the end of the year. Um, I don't know what New Hampshire's doing, but you know, everybody's kind of a little ahead of us and I find it completely annoying and it's frustrating as hell that we have to sit back and wait, you know, um, you know, kind of going off topic, you know, talking about spring break and whether or not we do that. Well, we don't even know if we're going back on May 4th or not. You know what I mean? But I mean, it's one of those things that are so super, you know, now you're starting to see districts make decisions based on spring break and then they have all the information where the, the state isn't being kind of forthcoming. I mean, they know we're not going back May 4th. They, they have to know that. Um, you know, if it hasn't even peaked in Western Mass and we're going to go back to school, how does that work? Um, but Anyway, that's the frustration that we had. But I think Mike wanted to make Mike Morris wanted to get out there. Um, they just kind of have people understanding that, that it's not that clear cut that we're going back May fourth. Um, that <clears throat> so I it was a good highlight for the paper to pick up too because someone made a bold statement. You know, the state doesn't make a bold statement. He had to do one locally. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep. Uh, anybody else any questions about this? All right. Mm -hmm. You want to give us a, uh, an update on what you've heard about the budget various and what some of the towns are talking about? So I would say uh, just kind of for organizational purposes, let's let's have Shelly give the update of uh, the financial status update because she's also going to talk about how we what we've done, like freezing budgets and such. Um, and then she kind of give that and then that will be we can kind of roll into from there, give everybody a baseline where we're at instead of talking about problems we may have down the road and not kind of establishing where we're at right now. If you don't mind, Mr. Chair. Hey, Shelly, I'm sorry I didn't call you earlier there. I I jumped over you there. I apologize. <laughs> you seem to do that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. No worries. It all meshes together, so it yeah. probably makes sense to talk about it as one. Yeah. Um, so I did send out a summary. I did send you the expense reports. Um, the warrants were signed. Thank you, Mr. Decker, for taking care of that for us. He signed 13 warrants totaling uh, $1,437,464.53. Sorry, I said that wrong. Um, we are looking to set up Adobe Sign to sign warrants digitally, although I did run into a problem already with it. Um, Waitley's went through without a breeze, tried to do Deerfield yesterday and found that Adobe Sign has a capacity on the size of the file that you can upload. Um, so for the smaller schools that don't have a significant amount of warrants that they're paying every month, it won't be an issue. But with Frontier especially, the file that I would have to upload is so big that I'm not sure that electronic is going to work for us. So. I'm exploring that a little bit. Um, and if we go that route, I'll certainly let you know. We'll have the April warrants ready beginning of May, um, whether Mr. Decker or um, Ms. Pierce wants to come in and sign them. Either way, Judy or Bob, that's fine. Yeah. Um, and then for uh, COVID-19 and then going into FY21, so there will be impact. We did talk about this a little bit at the Joint School Committee meeting, um, particularly in regards to those revolving funds, which uh, Frontier does not have in early childhood, obviously, um, but it does have a school lunch program. Um, and then there's some other revolving funds that we didn't necessarily talk about that I'm starting to look into, such as athletics. If athletics, if we have no sports this spring, you know, making sure that, that their accounts are sufficient. Um, been in communication with uh, Karen Swicky about the student activities accounts. So just trying to keep an eye on some of those things. 
moving forward. Um, but in the event that uh, we do have some significant revenue changes from the state and with our towns, uh, we have frozen the FY20 spending. Um, so only essential purchases should be happening right now. And they really need approval um, going through either me and Darius or me and a principal to make sure that we're only buying things that we really need to be, be buying. And the idea behind that would be that um, with this next topic of conversation, um, the towns are starting to ask us. We have two requests so far um, asking for reductions to the approved FY21 budget that you all already approved. Um, any questions so far before I move on? Comments? My only question, my only question, Shelley, is I don't think we should be cutting the budget until we see everything, all the dust settle. A number of years ago, the, uh, the administration in the various towns, and particularly Deerfield, asked the uh, Frontier Board or, or the superintendent to cut the budget. The budget got cut. Uh, ultimately, the school committee didn't agree, and but the towns appropriated the lesser amount. So eventually, the board had to condescend and take, take the issue. Unbetold, unbeknownst to us at the time, or, or right within a month or two, there were substantial bonuses paid to certain employees in the town of Deerfield. And I personally don't believe in cutting the frontier budget and in, in have that happen again. I mean, we lost a number of teachers, and uh, maybe some of them probably should have been eliminated, but we certainly could have used the rest of those funds to, to keep the building up, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I want to hold. I'm going to be – they've moved the election till, uh June, and I'll be gone in, sometime in June. But I don't think we should be cutting anything until we know where everything is. is. And I, I just uh, think that – we owe it to the taxpayers that are paying the bill and what have you, and, and to the kids to make sure we just don't cut. Now, the only thing that we've added to this budget is a couple teachers that we that the administration thinks are very necessary, and one of them is the behavioral one. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure where you're going to find the money. If I understand, Deerfield wants $30,000 cut, and I don't know if that's 30000 in Deerfield's assessment or 30000 in the whole of Frontier's budget. If it's 30 on the whole of Frontier's budget, you're talking roughly $60,000, which is, equates to maybe a teacher. So that's my feeling. And uh, like I said before, I'm a short timer. But all I know is we, we cut the budget and everything else that, that year, and they paid bonuses. Okay. And I don't think there was any press to it. All right. Thanks, Bob. So, so there, there is some concern about between Darius and I that um, we're jumping the gun, that the towns are asking us for cuts before they even know how their state revenue and their town revenues are going to be impacted. However, I think it is wise to be prepared in the event that it does come to fruition that we do need to make some changes. And you're absolutely right. Um, we have not added a ton to the frontier budget. We have two positions that give us the opportunity for some savings if we can eliminate them. But, you know, that's a conversation that um, will have to be had with George and Sarah and the special ed department and making sure that we have all of our bases covered. But, you know, we also have contractual obligations. Our teachers have a signed contract. Um, so we do have to make sure that we can fulfill all of those obligations. We have contracts with certain vendors for certain products that, you know, we can't reduce in, in every instance. Um, Deerfield asked for the 30,000. My understanding of it is off of their assessment. Um, and that request came in prior to any type of COVID concerns. They had expressed concern about meeting their town's budget at the Deerfield Elementary um, public hearing and then had come back and said, we're going to be asking for cuts in pretty much everything. So they identified a dollar amount for Frontier and a dollar amount for Deerfield Elementary. Now, Shelly. Uh, yes. The town of Deerfield has increased the administrative budget for the selectman's office many fold 
Frontier has, over the last five or six years, probably hasn't got much more than a 16 or 17 percent increase in Deerfield's assessment. But if you look at what the administrative cost of running the selectman's office, et cetera, it's gone up much more percentage-wise. And we shouldn't be having to take all uh, that big of a hit because we are basically under 3% most of these years. I'm not exactly sure what the number is, but we don't have a bloated budget. Uh, yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to step in too. I mean, I think the budgets that we put together um, now and even in previous years have not been out of control. I think they're, they fall right in line where they should be. And I've lived now in Deerfield for 12 years. I'm going to be really unpopular saying this, but our taxes in Deerfield are quite reasonable, if not even lower than surrounding towns. Uh, we've never gone through, I've never gone through a two and a half override in this town. You know, when that rule was put in place, it wasn't to prevent that from ever happening. It's really a correction so that every couple, you know, however so long you need to make a correction, you can do it. And um, I just don't want the town's finance department to use this pandemic as, a, as an excuse to not increase or you know, to cut our, our budgets. And, you know, if we do cut it this year, we're gonna have to make it up in two years. And then they're going to balk at a large increase in two years. I don't know. That's just my opinion on all of that. I think you're right. Okay. And, uh, you know, we can't balance, you know, it's been determined you need that behavioral t teacher and you need that English teacher. Now, uh, maybe you could eliminate them, but how much of a problem we're going to have with some of the students? I mean, we've identified a need and that's why it's in there. And, uh, you know, I, I think we should wait to see how all the dust settles. Uh, my concern is uh, going forward, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I look at the, the budget that we got today, it says we have 899,000 that uh, we are not under encumbrances. And I don't know if there's any more surprises that aren't encumbered that are gonna affect that piece of money this year. Do you have any idea, Shelly? Idea on, can you clarify? I'm not on sure I understand. Page 10. Yep. The bottom line on the uh, column all the way to the right. Yep. Now, do we have anything that you haven't encumbered that's going to affect that figure? Of course. There's always things that we're catching up on. We need probably three or four weeks to get caught up on any outstanding POs. I know that George put out a call that teachers should get in reimbursements and mileage forms to us because we're essentially jumping ahead to try to see where we're gonna be at the end of the year. And I don't anticipate that there's any major purchases unless there's something facilities related not in there. Um, I also added in some of our excess and deficiency money into that so that we could work on those projects that we agreed to, but we aren't doing any of them right now because our custodians have been ordered not to be doing that type of work unless it was already started at the state level. They've given us that instruction as, as for what maintenance staff can and can't be doing. So, you know, I, we have to be careful as well that we're not going to be over that 5% in E&D. So that's also on my radar. You know, we might have to um, shift some money around and Put some things from that are currently on choice onto general fund and you know kind of wait and see what happens with the numbers you might want to you might want to take and pay some of the salaries and the cafeteria out of our budget and so that we don't draw down the uh def or make the deficit any bigger than what it already is on a school lunch program yep that's definitely one of the ideas that we're talking about one of the things that scares me, though, is do we have all, in your encumbrances, do you have all the special ed uh, monies in there for the tuitions, et cetera, that we know of? Yes. Okay, they're all in there, so we're not going to get any surprises at the end. We should not. I mean, we, we have been on top of getting purchase orders into the system in advance, including for any out of district services. So, you know, I'm having conversations with department heads to make sure or administrators, I should say, um, 
to make sure that there aren't things missing. Um, I actually feel like we're in really good shape in that regard. We were a little bit behind on some of the special education transportation pieces this year, um, but we're not transporting kids right now and we're not contracted for any of those services. So, you know, I, I, I think I, we, we need a few weeks to let the database get caught up. My staff is also working part time in the office and doing what they can from home and secretaries are not necessarily working in the office right now either. So, you know, there's a little bit of a lag with the mail. We're picking up the mail twice a week and, you know, doing the best we can to keep moving with minimal person to person I'm contact. Not, I'm not criticizing what I'm, what I just trying to make sure that we know where we stand going forward. Okay. Yep. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at. The other thing I, I might suggest you talk to, uh, your maintenance person, Mr. Hildreth, is to see if there's anything else that he in, in thinks might be coming down the road uh, as to the building or something that's been overlooked. Okay. And uh, because if we, if there's a chance that we might end up with more than 5% in the, in, at the end of the year, we, we certainly need to take care of the building, you know, before we give all the money back to the town. So that's all right. I and got. I, yeah. And I, I, that's definitely on my radar to be thinking about. I also think that we're not anywhere near that risk yet. I do think we have school choice expenses that we could move on to general fund if we needed to. And like you said, the food service. So definitely all on my radar. Um, the other, I wanted to just circle back a little bit and I can see it looks like Darius is trying to jump in here and there too. Um, Damien, it's my understanding at this point that the Deerfield request is not related to COVID. That this came in prior to that happening because they um, were short a certain amount of money to meet their budget for all of the departments that they serve and um, that, that this request is separate um, and that they're not asking for anything additional related to this shutdown at that point. Um, but we do know that all of the towns are looking for it, you know, and quite frankly, a $30,000 cut from Deerfield is the least of our concerns if front, if uh, Sunderland is looking for a 5% cut in their assessment, which equates to $400,000. So, you know, Deerfield's like a drop in the bucket at this point. Um, and we, while I agree with Bob, we should not be looking yet. Um, we should not be cutting yet. Uh, we do have to look at the numbers and see what mm -hmm. could be realistic for us because it's it's likely going to happen that we have to make some kind of changes. All right. Thank, yeah. Thanks for that. You know, I mean, obviously, I'm biased in that, and you know, I don't. I, rather than seeing a budget get cut for whatever reason it is you know, my attitude about it, and I've, I've always been saying this, and it is unpopular, but I'd rather keep a, a well-funded school uh, for my kids and other kids than, you know, keeping my taxes low. I mean, I'll put it right out there. I'd rather see my taxes increase and have a good, well-funded school and let the town have to do a two and a half override to afford it. But that's that's me, so, and that's the position I'm in. So yeah, right. So I think what we missed here was the the kind of the setup of where we are financially within our four towns. So we're talking about Deerfield and thirty thousand dollars. However, um, so we're looking at you know the revenues from the state, and that's what we don't have our numbers on. And going into this meeting, and Bob kind of jumped in there early, saying what we should do is wait. But that's exactly what Shelley and I were going to propose. Um, we don't have enough information about what the numbers coming out of the state are. However, if you're talking about the financial losses of each town being three to five percent less in revenue, um, you're talking about it's going to have to be made up somewhere. And so, as Shelley kind of alluded to, that realistically, Frontier was going to have to tighten its belt at some level. If I mean, this is a kind of uh, financial. This is not a regular budget season. Um, if we were in a regular budget season in, in Deerfield, was, in Deerfield alone was asking for thirty thousand dollars. It's a much much different thing than what we're talking about. Let's say worst case scenario is that revenues in the towns are down by five percent across the board. Well, Frontier is going to have to do a little bit more than um, than thirty thousand um, dollars. Yes, you can't uh, you can't put it all on the local tax burden, as well as when families are probably losing jobs and that kind of thing. So it may be a year where we have to. When we do reductions, we may have to move some around from some of our rainy day funds, some of those other kind of things. But this meet, in this meeting, I really wanted to make sure that people understood 
you know, I had a conversation with Waitley. Waitley is clearly in the, we are waiting to see what the numbers are before we ask anything. Because just ask is, is, doesn't make, um, you know, doesn't make a lot of sense in the sense they want to run off the complete data. And Sunderland um, kind of, uh, they've sent a letter to us asking us to reduce our budget for 5%. So we've been officially asked. Um, however, in follow-up conversation with their select boards, um, you know, they basically wanted to us to make sure we have it on the radar. They understand that um, everybody's waiting on numbers and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, us jumping ahead and cutting, you know, four hundred thousand dollars. I mean, it's it's a big cut. You know what I mean? But um, you know, we don't know how we're going to bounce back from this thing um, economically. And you know, we, there may be cuts in the future. And I think that's the one thing we wanted to make sure this committee understood um, because we also have these. It's also these weird laws so let me kind of explain this to those members who don't understand it that the regional district has to submit a budget within 45 days prior to the first town meeting so it is my understanding um and donna you can correct me but i believe june 1st is the first town meeting at this point i think everybody's postponed them and the first one is june 1st so 45 days out of june 1st is next friday so that's if we officially change it on the warrant. However, we can make a recommendation and work with the towns if we have to lower it after that point. Because I don't think we're going to have enough information by next Friday to make a substantial, to make any kind of a substantial decision of this magnitude. I mean, we really have to see what happens over um, the next month and a half um, and what happens there. We also have to understand that Frontier is also in a vulnerable place because we get directly affected by 9C cuts. Where the 9C cuts go to the town, the town can absorb some of those cuts. They will come to, directly to Frontier. And for those who don't know what 9C cuts are, basically that's when the governor can just basically strike away amounts of money going out to the towns and to regional districts. And what he would strike away is regional transportation. So all of a sudden we were, we were funded at, uh, what's the funding number right now, Shelly? 70? They, they, moved, they moved it up with the um, student oh, opportunity. So, uh, stop it, Bob. Um, the uh, what's our regional transportation percentage for next year? It's like seventy-two percent reimbursement. Seventy-two percent. I mean, that's that's the highest it's been in years. I can see them very easily cutting that down to fifty percent, and then boom, we got a two hundred two hundred thousand dollars shortfall immediately upon receipt of that email from the governor, um, and so. We have to make sure that we're also building a budget that we don't just, um, I'm just kind of telling you the different problems that we have, that we also have to store some funds in school choice to be ready to react if the government decides to do that, as well as what the towns want us to do. So we kind of, we're in this really uh, tight situation where we have to kind of wait and see, um, see what the numbers are coming out. And also I have to understand that the Student Opportunity Act was based on, um, appropriated funds okay um so right now the student opportunity act was supposed to give millions and millions and millions of dollars to other districts you know we weren't going to get a lot however when they cut that because they're going to have to they're going to have to cut something and they're going to have to cut something in education they're now going to take other monies to offset the urban areas and we're going to get hit again so I, I i'm just worried about this kind of explosion of so um we have two things we need to do. One, we're going to have to re we're going to have to respect the requests of the towns that are going to also going to be figuring out how they're going to. They can't just all raise taxes because people aren't going to be able to afford it. Um, but in, in asking all their departments and us being their largest department, our schools, us combined with their elementaries, is the largest department. And so, you know, we're going to have to do some sort of percentage of cut depending on what the state says. Maybe the state's going to come out. You know, we don't get a lot of federal funding coming our way, but maybe be between federal funding and the rainy day fund, they're going to put a priority on education. It won't hit us as badly. I mean, that's that's pie in the sky thinking. Um, but I mean, we, we can be think positive right now as we wait for those numbers to come out. But realistically, I think realistically, we're going to be end up looking at our budget and maybe cutting a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars. I'm just and I and I've warned the administration to be starting to put together scenarios of what that looks like because um, that may be realistic where we end up. But uh, we're not going to go ahead and make that decision. Um, and as I was talking about the law-wise, so realistically, we we are going to go. Well, it's actually up to you. But our proposed budget moving forward 
is what's on the is what's on the ballot right on the warrants for the towns. That's what we voted. That's what we sent to them. So unless this committee decides to revote a different number before next Friday, that's the number that's going to be on there. Um, process wise, what we can do is as we see information through the month of April and through the beginning of the month of May, if we say, you know, we start to have a better understanding um, and we say, oh, we're, we want to reduce the budget by 1%. Let's, be, let's just keep it very simple. You know, 1% of the frontier budget is $113,000. Um, we would then go to town meeting floor and say, and we would tell everybody ahead of time. So was, we've done that before since I've been principal where we, we've gone back to town meeting floor and we did an adjustment on town meeting floor. But I'm, I'm just letting people kind of know the process of how this works, um, that we would communicate with the towns about what that looks like. Um, and again, maybe we don't do any cuts, but realistically, I don't understand how we can shut down all of our businesses for two months, that amount of tax revenue, and then where we make that up um, for our towns. I, I, don't, I don't see how that's going to be possible without us having to tighten our belts at some level. I just want to point out, Bob, that it takes a two-thirds vote to change that budget. Yes, okay, it's not, it's not a majority vote. It's a two-thirds vote, I believe. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I, I yep. think we're a long way from, from that, Bob. Oh, it's, a good, it's a good note, Bob, to note that, but most people will vote two-thirds to lower their budget any day of the week. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I mean, if you, if, if you end up in a situation that you're expected to cut a 1% out of the whole budget, you're going to have to go back and renegotiate your, your labor contracts because uh, it's got to come from somewhere. Other than that, it's just going to come from, from laying off teachers or janitors. Well, let's, let's administrators, Bob. Let's, let's let's see what the next month and a half does, and and that's something that we'll have to what, get into more discussion. Why? One question is: When is the last date that you can legally notify staff if you're going to have a reduction? Years ago, it used to like be March or April. You had to notify staff if they were going to be reduced. I don't know what it is at this point. Darius, do you know? I don't know. And I, you know, I'm seeing my home office, um, so I don't have the contract in front of me. I don't nope. have the contract either. Yeah, but you know, we have to, we have to think if if we're going to be asked to to make wholesale changes like that, we're going to have to go back and try to renegotiate uh, the labor contracts. You know, so we can make the place run the way it should run, leaner. But you know, so we we educate the kids the way they're entitled to be educated. So I have one more thing. Allison's, Allison's pulling out the contract. <laughs> Allison's on April May fifteenth, I think, right? On the reduction, Allison, are you still with us? She's looking. Oh, she must be. Bob, we should probably, you know, we'll, my personal opinion is, and I had the same type of question, but we should probably wait and see and what's going on before we start. Well, this is why I said to start with that we should wait and see what's happening. But if they're expecting it, we've got to sit there and think about contingency, what you've got to do, to try to make the thing work. I think, I think they're, I think they have a. Yeah, and I think that, the, and I've said this even at the elementary meetings as well, what's, what's difficult is 1%, 2%, 3%, like when you, when you those are, start the, those numbers start to get very large very quickly is one thing. And two, the administrative response to each one of those numbers is different. So if we have to cut $50,000, we look at that very differently than we're going to have to cut 150. There's not like a list of tools in a toolbox where we say, well, we don't need that tool, we don't need that tool, we don't need that tool. We actually have to come up with a plan of how we're going to continue to use the tools that we have, but have less of them. And so it's, it's a lot, and each dollar makes a difference in those decision making. So, um, so I just wanna make sure that people understand that. So it's not like there's a, we have a, a pecking order of things that we just, oh, we'll get rid of this and we'll get rid of this and get rid of that. Um, there may be things that we ask for in this budget that continue in this budget and we cut something else because this is the higher priority, uh, you know, that we need, you know, moving forward. And so that's just important to understand that there's a lot that goes behind cuts. Yeah. So Darius probably will have 
maybe a little bit more of an update at the end of the month if we have a joint meeting or something? Yeah, so, well, no, we're gonna end up having more frontier meetings, I'll be honest with you. Um, okay. Cause a joint meeting, you can't do budget at a joint meeting, especially okay. one of this significance, if it goes there. Next Tuesday, the um, the way the house is it Ways and Means the house the house they were supposed to give us an update this Tuesday and they had technical issues about where they think the financial forecast was going. They had, they had technical issues and they delayed it a week. And so my gut was, you don't delay a week because you had technical issues. I think maybe they had technical issues and they said we'll wait a week and have more information. You know, wait by waiting a week. And so next Tuesday they're going to give us some. They're going to give the, the state a, a, a economic forecast moving forward. And then from there, our towns are going to react about how they, and so we're going to kind of sit back a little bit. We're going to sit back and be patient. We're not going to sit back and just wait. We're going to sit back and be patient for the towns to digest what their needs are going to be. Um, and then they're going to make their request. And then we're going to figure out to what level, you know, we have four different towns and, you know, we get to, we get put ourselves in a really difficult situation because, um, you know, we need three out of four in a budget. Um, however, you know, we're going to have to see how each town is going to deal with this and what their what their needs are and if they and what their prioritization is. You know what I mean? Are they going to do equal across the board? Or do they want to hit education more or less? I mean, it's going to be interesting what each town does. Thanks, Darius. Hey, Bob. Yes, sir. I get one question uh, for Shelley. The electronic signing, the the board members when they sign that, are they going to see all all the backup information? I'll say it. Thousand. Yeah, turn yourself on, Shelley. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot I muted myself. Um, currently, the elementary schools are getting all of the backup information. The Frontier file is going to be too big to do that way, so I'm not sure that Frontier is going to be able to transition to this unless we start signing um, twice a month instead of once a month. So I'm still thinking about it at this point. We have a few more weeks before the next batch needs to be signed anyway, and hopefully we'll be able to be back into the office more by then, and it won't be an issue to have people stopping in to sign them. I just want, I just want to make sure who who's ever signing, and I'm only going to be here for two more months now, I understand. but. My understanding is that people should be able to see all the exhibits and not just sign a blank piece of paper. And Bob, uh, I'll guarantee it, Bob, that we'll do it the right way and see in every little. Uh, well, I, I I was at the collaborative and people took out their their iPad and they they did their electronic signature and never looked at anything. Okay. Well, that that's a rubber stamper. We're, you're not a rubber stamper. Uh, that is true. Uh, Allison, you you want to chime in and what you found for the question about reduction? All right, um, there there actually is no date that is put in the reduction of force language um, in Article Fifteen. Basically, what it says is, should a reduction be necessary, the school committee will notify all teachers as soon as possible, as soon as they identify who's going to be um, let go, laid off, basically. Um, so there's no actual date. The um, April 15th, I believe, is the date if there were evaluation problems, somebody was going to be let go because of evaluations. I think April 15th was the deadline that that has to be done by. Thank you. I know there was a date there on one of them. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Thank Allison. You. Thank you. Thanks, Allison. You're welcome. And I think it's important that this committee also, you know, we um, livelihoods are depending are dependent on our budgets and our decisions. So I just want to make sure that we're cognizant of that when we're talking about layoffs and such. That that those are worst case scenarios, and hopefully, um, you know, we have to talk about worst case scenarios so that we plan effectively. Um, but right now, that is, I just want to make make I'm saying this for the tape. That is not, you know, that is not in our wheelhouse to be be laying off lots of people and that kind of thing. That's not where our hope is to get through this without having to do that. Um, so I'm just saying that out loud because, you know, people do watch this and, you know, if people are on the lower end of the totem pole, they start to very much worry about their financial stability going into next year and so on and so forth. And that, that's, we want to be stable throughout 
um, and we'll make good decisions based on good information. Does anybody else have any, does it, other than Bob, does anybody else got any other questions for Sh Shelley? No, I, I've been through everything. I, I, I went through all the, all the uh, bills and what have you, and I had some concerns, but I, I talked to Donna about it, and I'm sure she followed up on them. Thank you, Bob. Anybody else have anything before we go on? Okay. Uh, next is uh, school school choice recommendations. Uh, is this with you, Darius, or George? Um, so basically, I, I just figured we'd, we'd knock this off the list of things we have to do. As you know, every year we have to vote to be a school choice school. Um, every year we provide you with just a general overview of where we stand on school choice. We tend to use it as the opportunity. So basically, I do need a, a vote from you to approve us of being a school choice school. If you don't approve us to be a school choice school, then you have to figure out how to cut hundreds of thousand dollars from our budget because we so <laughs> we do well with school choice. So um, I, I, sorry, that was a bad joke. So um, George, why don't you kind of give an overview of um, of the school choice doc? Is George still with us? I think he's, he's left. George he left, he left us a while ago, and I thought I know if that was George or not. I, I see him there. Okay, is he still there? Okay. Your mic is on, George. It must be that long metal connection, you know. I know it's terrible. <laughs> oh my God, my God. Did I finally get it? Did I finally <laughs> oh my God. Well, you're on. I can see you. So, so okay. So I'm trying to I'm trying to pull the document up. My computer is running very slowly right now. So bear with me. As as I would say at the Waitley meeting we had, I always like to give the discretion to the principal, even though we may have openings in a particular grade level. Um, there's always a chance that. Um, not filling it is better sometimes, but yeah, school choice helps us a lot. But there again, if, if it's too many openings and, and we have too many other obstacles in that class or a IAPs or something like that, then I like to give the discretion to George and his team and stuff to figure this out too. But. I, I can't get it right. My, my computer's moving so slowly, Darius. It's unbelievable. I'm sorry. I've got a really bad connection right now. Darius, you got to turn your mic on. I'm going to share my screen. Oh, Here we go. That's a fair. That's a so, fair George, you're talking about it. I'm just sharing it. <laughs> <laughs> George, you got to turn your mic on. I think I'll, I'll try to do it for him. Um, as, as normal, you know, we, we have the greatest number of applications that are going to be in grade seven and nine um, when people start their journey in either middle school or high school. Re remember, these numbers do not include the school choice um, that we um, inherit as members of the community from the sending school, the four sending schools. These are new ones um, and so you can see that you know basically five in the first um, <clears throat> you know uh, five in the first uh, seven eight nine and then ten of the upper grades um, remember that um, and here you can look at what our numbers look like is that um, again reminding people that you know in ninth grade it's 113 however we lose a, a portion that go to tech um, in ninth grade, so that 113 is actually probably going to get down closer to 100. Um, our seventh grade class, we like to be around 120. I mean, uh, yeah, 120 um, is where we want to be. The eighth grade class is um, is very full, um, but um, that also includes um, special education students too that may be not in the mainstream programs. How's that, George? Pretty good. That was that was great, and I was going to say. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, right now we 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 probably have. I think we only have six pending applications coming into seventh grade. Uh, but school choice makes up a great uh, a big part of our population. 
uh, and we really depend on it. Um, and so it's something that we'd obviously like to keep going. I have a question, uh, Bob. Go ahead, go ahead, Mr. Bob. In ninth grade, they're projecting a total of 113 students, but there's an asterisk next to it, and it says, does not include all Franklin County Tech students and or other students leaving. This number is current. So in other words, I think they've already factored out the ones that are planning to go to tech school or otherwise leave, the way I read that note. And that's a, Bob, I just, I just, I thought I mentioned that. Um, I'll, I'll say it again, but that 113 number does not include the um, 10 to, you know, 10 to 15 or so tech students that leave us and or students who go to private schools. Okay. So I said that I expect our ninth grade class next year to be around 100. Yeah. That's, that's opposite of what uh, the footnote says. Because it says here it does not include the Franklin County Tech students and or other students leaving, which implies to me that's already been factored out, Darius. No, it does not include the Franklin, all the Tech students leaving. So that 113 is our current number. This is not including the number of students that we know are leaving, is what it's trying to say there. All right. Well, anyway. So, because we're, we're, we're showing there that there's a, uh, um, George, it's your document. You can tell us what you're trying to show here, but. <laughs> So on the, on the 1st of September, you're going to have 113 kids. Again. Go ahead, George. No, well, that's five. so. <laughs> so basically what the document is showing is if those students aren't leaving, that's how many kids we would have. We're going to probably lose a number, a few kids to private schools and to the tech school between, between now and next uh, September. Thanks, George. And we don't know what the projection is, and I'm just guessing off of past year's things, we lose about 15. So, you know, right now it's 113. So we're going to be around 100 next year in the ninth grade. Does anybody else have any questions? And then maybe we'll, take a few, maybe we'll take a few choice numbers in as well. So that would maybe help offset. Does anybody else have any other questions about school choice? If not, let's, let's vote on it. I need a motion. Seconded. Olivia, did you? I, I, typed it in. I, I motioned it and Olivia seconded it. I, I typed it in the okay. chat. I'll do oh, a roll call. I don't see chat, so. All right. I'll do a, a roll call myself. Yep. Yes. Judy Just, Decker? Yes. Did you say yes? yes. Okay. Uh, Damien? Yes. Damien? Yes. Uh, Mary? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Olivia? Yes. Thank you. So what this thing Next. basically says, Bobby, we project 183 school choice students next year. That's a lot of students. Give or take. Okay, next is the MVP. And give or take, we have 489 residents. Okay. Next is the MVP rainwater design. George or Darius, who's uh, taking the lead on this? I'd love it if George did, but I think that's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I apologize. I don't think I sent out the as part of the packet the um, the write up on this. You want to um, basically so coming out of the capital improvement committee. Um, one of the things that is going on is obviously we're redoing our parking lot and we were able to get a grant for the MVP, um, Municipal Vulnerability Program, um, where we got um, through the town of Deerfield, they, they filed on our behalf um, uh, for a series of things in the town of Deerfield and to make um, to look at possibly making our parking lot a more green parking lot. Um, and what that means is right now, all the water collected on our roof and on our parking lot dumps right into the um, bloody brook and um, obviously causing flood issues. And so part of the MVP grant funding is about looking at um, the stability of our communities in the future with greenhouse, it, you know, global warming and more rain and more storms and just trying to do a better job in our, if, you know, all those kind of things are doing a better job with our environment. And so the idea um, here is that we received a grant to make, um, 
to look at uh, the development, getting plans of making our parking lots greener by um, creating rain gardens, which slows the water um, from going into the river, and also looking at pervious pavement which basically allows instead of the water pooling, it, it drains through the pavement in portions of our parking lot. We're not looking at, and, and so I was on a meeting actually this morning with the, the town of Deerfield reviewing this program, um, reviewing the design with the designers this thing, and they're going to they're going to start looking at um, designing our parking lot. So basically, what we're doing is, um, in kind of in a nutshell, we're going to get both prices coming out of this: the green price, and I call it the black price. The black price being pavement. Um, very easily, like that term, Bob Smiling. Um, so, um, so basically, um, and then we would we would apply for the next round for construction to get money to help offset this construction. So this is kind of the the buy-in of this that the capital committee liked was that hey, if we can do this, do it green and do it cheaper than what we have um, budgeted, or do it at budget and do it green. Um, that would be a wonderful thing. So uh, we 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 bought into that, and we just wanted to get the school committee's approval because now this is the subcommittee wondering if the school committee should approve to accept that grant um, for the amount of thirteen thousand five hundred dollars um, to move forward with the design. We will have to match that with about forty five hundred dollars of our money. We're going to have to do the design anyways. Um, they're going to go through look at the water water basins in you know, the different structurals, walkways, um, you know, the whole kind of, our, you know, the uh, wiring for our lighting, the whole, the whole kind of thing that they're gonna be looking at as part of this thing. So um, we're looking for your approval. The subcommittee is looking for your approval to move forward um, with the MVP grant. Uh, I think it's kind of a no brainer, but I wanna bring it to you for your approval. I shouldn't say that and then ask for your vote. That, that was kind of wrong, so I apologize. <laughs> I know Mary's shaking her head at me. I can't see you, Mary, but I feel it. Mary is um, um not Mary, Olivia. <laughs> Excuse me. Your second, Mary? Second. Okay, we do a roll call again, please. Myself, yes. Judy? Yes. Mr. Decker. Mr. Decker. Mr. Decker, where'd you go? Damien? Yes. Mary? Yes. And Olivia? Bob. Bob. Hold, Bob. hold on. Hold on. Olivia, you said yes. Did you? Yes, okay. I said yes. Yep. Thank you. Bobby? Bob, Bob, do you? It's a roll call vote, Bob. Did you say yes? I, what I wanted to do, I didn't realize my moot was on. Uh, I don't remember the $4,500 match being discussed at our subcommittee. Maybe it was, but I don't recall it. I think it was, but Darius, can you? It's in the document that I handed out, so um, when I remember we discussed it or not, it, it was in there. Oh, well, all right. So I'll forward, Bobby. Okay. I mean, we, we talk about what it was going to cost, you know, what it would cost for, for us to pay for it straight up. I mean, it's, it's, that's a deal. You know what I mean, Bob? I understand. I just want to make sure that, uh, and hopefully it'll be a grant to do this project, too. And if the other thing they were going to do was to take in, capture the water and feed it out to our irrigation system in the summer so we wouldn't have to pay the, the water district for, to buy water. Correct. One of the other projects that they're they're looking at, and they were talking about doing that with some of the AP environmental students, is look at. So again, anytime we catch water and we got a big flat roof, it's a big upside down umbrella. Um, is it? What if we could store the water that we collected and use it for irrigation instead of paying the town for fresh water for that? The problem with that is so um, there's grant money in there, and you're correct, Bob, there's grant money in there to do a design with that and work with Frontier students as an educational thing. Um, and we have a, uh, 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 Jason Curtis, who lives in town, works for Tie and Bond, um, has volunteered to do some work with the students, Frontier graduate, um, to kind of to be looking at this. The actual collection and um, tanks and stuff, that's where the money gets starts to get big. And so we're definitely gonna have to need, we're gonna need some grant money to do that. We're not gonna be able to pull that from a, 
um, a general fund in order to think. So it'll be kind of, it'll be more of a, it may just be what could theoretically be done and then be looking for grants later, but um, that's also being looked at. Hey, before Mary, Mary, Mary has to leave at 115, um, the Student Opportunity Act grant, is that something simple we could talk about so we can get Mary to vote on it with us? Um, Sarah left the meeting and she's supposed to present that. Okay. Um, Sarah's I'm back. Leave. I'm here. Oh, okay. I was just blocked out. Um, hold on. Uh, so so here, Sarah, hold on. Mary, are you still with us? Mary? Yes, I'm here. Well, give us two minutes there before you leave, okay? Okay, you got two. Okay, go ahead, Sarah. Okay, here we go, 30 seconds or less. Um, and I'll have uh, Darius and Shelly jump in if they need to. But basically, um, the state was requiring us to write a grant indicating what we were going to do with some of the foundation funds that were um, being um, appropriated to the front to Frontier. And so we have a project that we already had in place and had a plan for for next year and that's what we're going to use those funds for so we are essentially um, fully integrating and changing our high school uh, special education delivery model so that instead of students um, going to skills classes as their primary form of um, academic support we are going to free up our special educators at the high school similar to the way that we do at the middle school and they are gonna be have the ability to be able to push into classes and be able to address needs right in the regular general education classroom. So the middle school model has been a strong model that we really like, and we are just going to replicate that model at the high school instead of um, doing more pullout. Thank you. We need a motion? You got a motion, Bob? I make the motion. Who's got I'll a second? second? I'll second. Judy. Judy. Um, I know Mary's got to leave. Anybody got a quick question, like 10 second question? Okay. All in favor, let's see. Bob, yes. Judy? Yes. Yep. Mr. Decker? Yes. Damien? Yes. Mary? Yes. Olivia? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Oh. See you soon. See you guys. Hey, Bobby. Soon. Yes, sir. Bobby, our meeting is over because we now don't have a quorum. Okay. How much do you have left? No, that's it for voting. That's it for voting um, yeah. things. The other thing, the only thing we have now are just the reports. I think George already gave his report, right, George? Yep. Um, I've kind of given my report already. Collaborative, I'm not even sure if they even met. Collaborative, was there anything? Were Olivia, are you doing collaborative? No, Lynn does it. Lynn, Lynn's not here. Um, and then the chairs, if the chair had something to say. <laughs> well, the, only, um, the only thing is the policies that we're first reading, people go over and there's three of them that we're removing. Um, there was only one other thing about, uh, was it the last one, Darius, the public comment on school committee meetings? Just So basically uh, where we're at with that is I talked to Adam regarding that, Adam Dupree, your attorney, um, about how you guys wanted to have um, – the chair to be able to waive the policy. He read through the policy and he wanted to follow up the MASC. He, he disagreed with some of the language in it. Um, and um, in order to be able to, to uh, waive it, um, he didn't think that was a, a good move either because then you're showing favoritism when you waive it and when you don't waive it, you can get caught up in that. So he wanted, he asked me to kind of put it on hold and he'd get back to me. He's also up to his eyeballs and. Um, legal issues right now with this remote learning and MOAs while the districts are representing and stuff. So um, I think we should maybe we just push, we can push all the, we can push those all off to the next meeting if you want. They're all and pushed off. Right? Um, they're, they're pushed away. I saw what you said, Donna, but it says first reading on the top. So we'll, we'll vote on next month. Yeah, I messed up on that agenda for April. That's all right. Um, Darius, what happened, what happened was we had some committees that were, just so people know, we had some committees, not to blame Donna, but we had some committees that have already voted and passed these. We had some committees that can't got canceled in the middle of the COVID thing. And so we're kind of, we don't, usually it's all, everybody's doing the same thing every month and we're all mixed up right now. We'll, we'll take care of it next month. Bobby. Yes, sir. As a, as a point of uh, setting up the agendas, I would suggest where it says executive session and you have the word none, that 
it would be better to say none, not anticipated at this time. Okay. But if we, want, we could bring it up. Okay. So if it says not anticipated at this time, we could still bring it up. But when it says none, you can't have an executive session. In my opinion. Um, okay. Gotcha. Allison had a question about uh, spring vacation. Is is that for this year? That's for this year. So um, I believe so. Yeah. So that, that that's for this year. So basically, what we did on that, um, I know that we, you know. I know the committee itself it is a committee's decision on basically changing the school calendar. So you know, basically, you'd probably run off of an administrative. Suggestion, um, you know, we ended up polling the teachers to see how they felt. Um, we basically got a mixed um, response, almost about 50-50 um, to go through April vacation or um, cancel April vacation and then take days off the end of the year. Um, in the in the Valley right now, or, or Franklin County, it's about 50-50. About 50% 50 of the schools have canceled. About 50% of the schools are, are going, um, are having it. Um, so, um, you know, where we ended up being, I going into this, I wasn't strong one way or the other. I still could be convinced either way. Um, but right now, I, my feeling is that the, we started doing this right out of the gate, this home instruction. There are some districts around us that did not. Um, they took a week off or, or, or were lightly working for two weeks before getting into the full kind of the full throes of it. Our teachers got in the full throes of it basically probably that Tuesday or Wednesday of that following week, um, you know, after that work on that Friday. So we're talking about, you know, 12 weeks straight of online learning. Um, and we've kind of evolved things and asked more and more of the teachers. And so I think a break in there is a good idea. I see the other side having two kids in the house who I spoke to just before getting onto this. And they're like, well, what are you going to do that week, Dad? I'm like, oh, no, I don't know. <laughs> um, so I, I get that. Um, it's kind of a balance between the two. Um, I mean, I think our kids also probably will need a break. Um, but we haven't had the full closure from the state by the governor yet. So technically we're going back on May 4th, which we're not. But, you know, um, so, you know, we also, our last day of school, because we had less snow days, um, is a little bit earlier than some of the schools that, you know, Amherst, I know, was going the fall, halfway through the following week. They did a hybrid model where they did half their days so they can end on the Friday, the 19th. Um, so anyways, the big mess. And for us to do this, I have to have a joint meeting. If we're gonna have a joint meeting, I gotta let Donna know pretty darn quickly because I need 48 hours of business hours to do a, a vote next Wednesday to do this. Um, in a way, you know, some people say, you know, there was some comment made to me that, you know, um, how this sneak up on you um, and this kind of thing. But, you know, I was thinking that we were going to need to break right out of the gate because people were kind of burnt out. There's a lot of anxiety in the community. Um, this week, I think people are starting to fall into a groove. And so the people are shifting a little bit, a little less anxiety. The anxiety could bounce right back up if we get more cases in our in our immediate community. So, Again, I'm all over the place with it, but right now, not having um, a substantial reason to to change it, I'm not making any recommendation to the committee to do so. So we're just going to keep this uh, April vacation as is. Right. You don't have to do any vote. You're just taking no action because we're just following the calendar. I saw Liv asking about it. We're just going to keep the calendar. The kids will, everybody will have that week off, and except for Donna. <laughs> One day off, holiday. Um, Darius, if when everybody gets off, if we can just talk for a couple minutes after when we're all done here. I'm after getting you, scolded. After you stop recording and live streaming and all that I'm stuff. I'm getting scolded, aren't I, Bob? No. Nope. You scolded me once, once, once the recording show. I just, uh, how about a motion to adjourn, unless somebody else has something? We motion already adjourned. Mary left. Okay, Bob. <laughs> We adjourned at 119. All in favor? Shut up. Shutting things off here. Okay. No, no yes. one's saying anything embarrassing. Yes. Sorry. Don, you got everything? I think so, yeah. See you later. Here.